I was getting so mad that I can't remember the last time I felt this way. I borrowed this G-Shock from one of you viewers and wore it for the last seven days, but did I damage it? We're gonna go through my review of this watch, plus we're gonna try and upgrade the NATO straps, so stick around to the end. Let's start with the four specific mods the owner performed on this GBX100 that make it so unique and see how they performed over the last one week. And let me start by saying I loved the polarizer mod on this watch which made this epic rainbow display as you can see. It really just made looking down at my wrist every day an absolute pleasure and even the digits somehow turn negative while other parts are positive. I will say that the polarizer wasn't applied perfectly at the bottom left and right corners and if you get the light just right you can sometimes see the way it is distorted. There you go. Oh, and GigaChad left a comment asking about the legibility of the display. So here it is side by side with my GBD200 with an unmodified MIP display for your reference. The second mod done, which was adding some capped on tape to the backlight in order to change its color. It did actually look pretty cool, but as you can see, I did find it a little bit hard to read. Here's the unmodified GBD200 for comparison. The third modification was to install this cool NATO strap in the place of the original rubber ones. Now I do quite like the design of this strap, but I did find that the way that the straps are jammed in here did bother me over the last one week. So that is something we are gonna try and address at the end of the video by installing a 16 to 22 millimeter adapter. The fourth and final mod on this watch was a hydro mod, which the owner performed by using WD-40 branded silicon oil and filling up the internal cavity. And I'd suggest you watch the original unboxing video to catch up on that one. But little did I know that this hydro mod gave me the scare of a lifetime after my volleyball game where I thought that I damaged this watch. That's right, after my first round of smashing this watch around at volleyball, I looked down at my wrist and realized that a bubble had formed. No, not you bubble, it was an air bubble. So when I got home, I messaged the owner, Red Wyvern. I let him know I had some bad news and that I had created a bubble in the watch somehow. Thankfully, Red Wyvern was super chill about it and reassured me that this was normal. The bubble was already there and it must have just got jostled out of position during the volleyball game. He also let me know that I could make it go away by taking the watch off and leaving it upside down overnight so the bubble would resettle. You may be wondering, does the oil from the Hydro Mod affect functionalities like the step counter? Well, fortunately, it does not. You can see all of my days here with accurately recorded steps, including the lazy Saturday that I spent watching Lord of the Rings. Now let's move on to the pros and cons of the GBX100, and this time we're talking about the original watch itself, not the modifications. Let's start with what I liked about this watch. For a start, it's got to be this metal bezel. It looks really cool, feels really high quality, and I especially love the way the letters are nice and legible for all of the functionality and branding. Compare that to the GBD200, look, you can barely even read these. Surprisingly, I really enjoyed the Bluetooth notifications over the last one week, unlike what I found with my GBD200. But the reason for that is that I had accepted the fact that I was not going to scroll through whenever I got a notification and try to read the full message because it's much easier to just check your phone. Another thing I really liked was the step counter, which we took a peek at earlier. I found that it really does help motivate you to keep moving throughout the day so you don't have low stats. And this is something that I also found with my GBD200, which I would definitely recommend watching the full review for this one. Another unique feature I experienced with this watch that I really loved was the sun moon tide. To be more specific, I enjoyed the sun functionality. I didn't really care about the tides, it just doesn't affect me, but I did like seeing what time the sun rose and set because it let me know how much daylight I was going to have. The next thing I liked was the countdown timer, and actually this watch doesn't technically have one, but I was able to work around that by using the workout mode as you can see here. So every one minute the timer would finish and start the next one minute set, and that was my cue to flip my steak. 
And uh, if you're enjoying this video as much as Bubble enjoyed the little piece of steak I gave her, make sure you ram that like button. Now, let's move on to the cons. These are the things that I hated about this watch, and things are gonna get pretty heated. First of all, some of the menu navigation is extremely unintuitive, especially the aforementioned workout timer, which was an absolute nightmare to have to go through fumbling around to adjust every individual timer. And I kept getting the impression that Casio really wants to force you to use their app. More on that coming up soon. I also found that the backlight button was a little bit mushy. It just doesn't have a tactile click when I press it. I don't know if this is a result of the mods or something being jammed, but it is not a good experience. Next up, the vibration alarm was never enough to wake me up in the morning. I just found that the vibration was simply not strong enough. Now, this may be because Red Wyvern, the owner, had to install a counterweight onto the little rotating motor so that it would spin freely in the Hydro mod. So that's probably what's caused this. Santa Bubble is here to wish you a Merry Christmas and also to keep you calm while you hear my most frustrating experience with this watch. Now literally all I wanted to do was set up the one unique feature of this watch, the Tide Moon Sun, so I could check it out. Now, if you want to set up Tide Moon Graph and you are not within one of the 13 preset locations, then guess what? You're going to have to go into User, Custom, and generate your own coordinates. Now, I went on Google to track down my longitude and latitude, and that's what you'd also have to do. Okay, fair enough. Let's set it up. Wait, it only goes up in increments of 0.1. Well, maybe I can hold it down to auto-scroll up to 30 degrees. Nope, I can't. Okay, maybe I can auto scroll down. No, that brings me back to the home menu. Even more frustrating. And if your longitude happens to be 90 degrees, you are in for a world of pain because the maximum is 180 and you'd have to go from either above or below and to get just one degree takes 10 presses, which means if you wanted to get down to 90, you'd have to press this one button 900 times. Now, obviously, as someone who's conducting a thorough review of this watch, I felt obligated to set up the Tide Moon Sun. So guess what? I literally sat there and pressed this button 900 times. I'm not even joking. And I was so pissed off by the end of it that I just wanted to throw this watch out the window. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a way to set this up in the app and then transfer the settings to the watch, which is obviously much easier. But this should not be a requirement. Not everyone has a smartphone with the app and is able to do that. You should be able to do it manually and a rather simple solution would be to simply make it so you can hold down one of the buttons to scroll. Imagine grandpa trying to set this up with his arthritis fingers and having to press this 900 times. With these pros and cons in mind, would I buy a GBX100? The answer is yes, if I didn't already own a GBD200. But since I do, I don't think it's worth buying just to upgrade the Tide Moon Sun, nor is it worth it just to go from rubber to a steel bezel, although that is pretty cool. Now, this is why I feel so fortunate to have borrowed this watch from Red Wyvern. It's given me a chance to test it and review it without having to buy it. Thank you so much again to Red Wyvern for the watches and for your support, you absolute legend. If you'd like to see me do a borrowed watch idea again, like the video and leave a comment below and I'll see if I can organize another one. And if you do want to get your hands on a GBX100, I'll leave a link for you below, but just make sure you've got the app ready or you better be ready to press a button 900 times. Now it's time to modify this watch with the full blessing of the owner. And I have a few different strap and adapter options to try, so let's get into it. And for the record, this is the before with the folded straps causing the whole watch to protrude above the wrist. So now let's open up one of our adapters and see if it can fit. These are 16 to 22 millimeter NATO strap adapters. I'll be leaving links to all of the adapters and straps below if you want to get your hands on them. Okay, what do you reckon? There's a, quite a nice color match there, and also the, uh, the size is really nice and flush. Okay. Now, I do also have another option, which is these silver ones, and I figured this might look pretty cool because it would kind of match the steel bezel here. So let's chuck those on for a try. Ooh, 
look at that. Okay, look, it's a tough call. I'd really love to hear what you guys think in the comments, but right now I need to make a decision. And to be honest, I am really digging these silvers. It just contrasts with the black, yet matches the bezel. All right, now we've got a few different straps to try. Uh, let's make a start with, I don't think we're gonna go with this, but you know what? We're gonna try a rainbow strap just for the fact that we have this cool rainbow display. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and these straps actually have these quick release uh, spring bars. There it is. Okay, now uh, a little bit flamboyant for my taste, but we'll give it a wrist check. Oh man, these straps are very, very stiff actually. Damn, that's even hard to... Uh, there we go. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments. Give it a rating from one to 10 and let's move on to the next strap. Okay, let's try the orange and black NATO strap. This one I think looks super cool. I've been waiting for a project to try this on. There it is. Oh my God. Look at that guys. That looks really, really cool. Whew. What do you reckon of this one, guys? Let me know, one to 10 in the comments below, the orange and black stripe NATO. Now let's try our Bond NATO strap. And uh, if I'm being honest, I already know, having checked with Red Wyvern, that he is pretty keen on this one. And I can see why, it looks absolutely badass. So let's get this one on. Oh yeah, that looks very classy the James Bond NATO. Let's get it on for a wrist check. So this is our after, and doesn't it look like an absolute beast now? Red Wyvern, thanks again. I'll make sure you have your original strap and hardware on the way to you as well, of course, with your Loris that you lent me. But before we do, let's take a look inside like we promised we would last video. If you'll remember in our unboxing video, Red Wyvern left a note that this is a pain in the ass to open. So I reckon the issue is gonna be pulling these straps open once we get this case back off. The screws are off, but how do we get this case back off? Guess we can kind of slide it sideways. Oh, so check it out. There's the uh, the gasket, which he mentioned was pinched. Okay, let's, let's try and be gentle here. Uh, man, that was a pain to get out. Wow, interesting. Look at that. I mean, when we put it back, we will try and get that gasket on track, I suppose. But there you have it. The inside of a Loris. Don't worry, mate, I'll make sure it is nice and waterproof for you. So I think if we want to avoid pinching that gasket again, we're gonna to have to try and come down straight. So I might see if I can, like that, you see? And then maybe if I can, come on. Yes. There you go, mate. Nice and waterproof. Oh yeah. Sounds working. Good stuff. Now here's the part where you come in. I need help deciding on our next watch of the week. And this time I feel like getting absolutely blinged out. On the left, we have this DB360 in gold. And on the right, we have the golden A500W. To cast your vote, head over to the Goat Reviews YouTube profile, click on the community tab, and there you'll see the poll to cast your vote. Make sure you're a subscriber so you don't miss voting on our next Watch of the Week. And while you're down there, let me know, which strap did you prefer? The orange, the bond, or the rainbow? To celebrate with those of you who watch this live, I'll be giving out five free gifted channel memberships. And if you'd otherwise like to join us, check it out here. Here's some more great content for you to watch next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next review.